go ahead and take a look at a couple of those from your algebra packet. The first one is number 13, and of course this has an asterisk. And remember, this is really more your level. It's a little bit more advanced rather than just a basic academic course. So I do have some graph paper. I encourage you to use graph paper. So if you could just write this problem down. And if you title your notes, I would title a video on demand, uh, algebra review. And then of course you could put today's date and then maybe skip a page if you're in a spiral or if you're in a loose leaf, you can go back and put your sync uh, algebra review notes in here, should I pick up where we left off. So again, I'm going to just talk about this first example here. And this is going to be one third times. And remember, those are absolute value bars. So remember, absolute value is always positive. It looks like we're going to have a positive answer under here anyway, because nothing's going to be negative with that fraction. So remember, you have to completely knock out groups first. So this one third is just going to hang out for a moment. And we're going to do the operations that are in those absolute value bars. This is going to be 1 plus 49 because, of course, 7 squared is 49 over 5 squared. And that is going to turn into something that looks like this. And 50 over 25, of course, is just 2. And remember, when you multiply fractions, you multiply straight across. Remember, a whole number is like over 1. So the answer for number one on your key says two-thirds, and that's how we are going to get that problem. For the sake of time, I am just going to go ahead and write on these sheets that I've printed, but remember, graph paper is an excellent way to keep your notes organized here in CAP Algebra 2. All right, I'm going to skip to 25 because 25 is essential to what we're doing. You have to know how to multiply uh, binomials. And remember, this is foiling. First, outer, inner, last. So it's going to be 3x times 5x, which is 15x squared. The two outside terms, of course, are a positive 9x. The two inside terms are going to be a negative 10x. And the two last terms is going to turn into a negative 6. Remember, when you FOIL, you can always combine the two middle terms. So our final answer is going to be 15x squared minus x minus 6. And please box in your final answer. Um, number 27, really the only, well, there's a couple of things that your teacher wants to pat, point out for number 27. First of all, this is not this. So no, 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 that is not what's going on here. What is going on is it is five times x to the zero power. And remember, anything to the zero power, you need to remember this from algebra one, anything to the zero power always equals one. So this is going to be 5 times 1, so the answer here is just a 5. Okay, so that was our algebra review. The next part we're going to talk about is going to be um, graphing on a number line. So this is certainly where your graph paper is going to come in handy for these problems. Specifically, I am going to look at number 39. So on number 39, it almost appears that it is a, a proportion, but of course we have an inequality symbol. I want to show you how I work inequalities when I have a negative variable. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to knock out that fraction. And the way that I knock out that fraction is I multiply by the reciprocal of what that fraction has in the denominator. So the reciprocal of one half. And what is the reciprocal of one half? Remember, you just flip it upside down. It is just going to be a two. So we need this number. I'm going to multiply both sides of that inequality by this number. So a negative t over two is going to be greater than three halves. And we are going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal. When you multiply a fraction by its reciprocal, it gets completely wiped out, kind of. It really turns into a 1. And remember, 1 times anything is just whatever it is. So those two multiplied together turns into a 1. 
These two multiplied together also turns into a one, so you are left with this. And I wanna talk for a moment about negative variables. You might have been taught in Algebra 1 that you would multiply both sides by a negative number, but you had to remember to flip the inequality symbol. I am not going to do that. When I complete my work and when I have negative variables, I move it to the other side to get rid of the negative. Remember, numbers moving back and forth across an inequality or an equal sign, the sign changes. I can rewrite this to look like this. Notice both of those guys switch spots. Their signs changed because they moved to the other side of the inequality symbol. I don't have to worry about flipping a negative anymore. So all I'm gonna do is I am going to graph that answer on a number line. And the reason why I'm going to graph that answer on a number line is because you have an infinite amount of answers. So I'm gonna draw a number line here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead, when you sketch your number lines, please go ahead and drop in zero, cause you know zero is separating the number line into two equal halves. I need a negative three, and I'm just gonna put a positive three just for a print frame of reference here. So here is how I graph uh, number lines. I use my highlighter because I think it makes a clean shading area for the answer to match the inequality. Remember, it is not part equal. So I'm gonna draw an open circle on the three. And let's go ahead and read what this inequality says. What this inequality says is negative three is greater than t, which means your t values are less. And y'all, there is nothing going wrong. There is nothing wrong with going back and double checking yourself like you did in elementary school with a little alligator mouth. The alligator mouth or the alligator mouth wants to eat the bigger number. So the alligator mouth is open to the negative three, which means t is less. So I am going to shade where t gets less than. This is a perfect answer. I will completely accept this on a test or a quiz. If you use a highlighter and choose to show it like I did, I prefer that. If you do not use a highlighter, you're going to shade above the line like this. You need to show that. Without a highlighter, with a highlighter. You're gonna take that and you're gonna roll with it. All right, so the next thing I wanna talk about, and this is really gonna wrap it up for today's video on demand, uh, numbers 44 through 50. So if you take a look at your calendar on Canvas, you have factor drills coming up. You have to be able to factor just as efficiently and accurately as if I asked you what five times four was, six times 42. You really don't have to think about your multiplication facts. You really must get down your factory. And the reason why I have a YouTube icon here is because I wanted to remind you, I do factoring drills on my YouTube channel. So go look for that factoring or feel free to Google anything that you want. The way that I format and teach factoring and use factoring for us here in class is on the YouTube channel. So please check that out when you can. Very important. I'm quizzing you over factoring. You've got to be a factor expert. All right, so your homework, of course, is the algebra review packet, all of it. Y'all, I know that's 63 problems, but remember, it's not due until the 23rd. So go ahead and space that out. And besides, like half of these problems won't take you any time to complete at all. I'll see you in sync sessions. Do not forget to mark your packet and let me know if you have any questions in the sync, and I'll be happy to work those with you.